it's 9.30 a.m. 11th November 2020. So yay, I shaved and I washed my face. <laughs> and I have the lights on so there's better lighting. Uh, I want to talk about this fraud thing again because I'm worried that someone from Centlink uh will see my previous video where i said i feel like a fraud and they will think that i committed fraud uh lied in my application for the disability support pension and that they will cancel my pension uh or or um i don't know uh charge me with fraud or something um like Fraud is a very serious legal matter. It's a crime. Did I commit fraud? Did I commit fraud in my application for this disability support pension? Did I lie? How could I have committed? I sent letters from my psychiatrist, from my psychologist. Uh, I think, I don't know if I sent anything with my GP, in support of my disability allowance. I, my psychologist, um, you know, has been seeing me, you know, and my, I actually sent them even a copy of the appointments I've had with them, so I had a letter saying, uh, I asked the uh, center to give me a letter listing uh, the the dates I attended the session so the letter would contain the date I saw my psychologist and my psychiatrist so they they have that information as well so that's correct and, and based on those letters uh, and based on the um, interview I had with the uh, person whom the Centlink uh, employed to do the medical evaluation. Uh, <laughs> I remember like having that interview with them on, 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 uh, online. The interview ended quickly because <laughs> I think they thought I was, I don't know why, maybe they, they recognized that my application is good or sincere or genuine or something. Um, based on how I interacted with them online. Uh, okay, so that, that that's the determination they made based on my letters and based on uh, the, the online interview, which was done by someone hired by the government to do it. So in what sense did I commit fraud? When I say I feel like a fraud, that's that's expressing how I feel like I don't deserve the support. But that that feeling is like my own sort of self doubt. That feeling uh, could be mean, could be feeling like I don't deserve to be helped, because that could be a symptom of my own. <sighs> poor self-esteem or something. <laughs> I feel so exhausted having to uh, justify myself. I feel... <sighs> I knew I shouldn't have uploaded that video because it's just going to get me even more anxious. Why can't I just relax? Why can't I just relax? So what can I do? I mean, let's say the government, the someone from the government sees that video and, say, and says, okay, we're going to have to review your application because you said in a YouTube video that you feel like a fraud or something. And uh, so we're going to have to review your uh, allowance. And, what am I supposed to do? It's 
This is so fucked. I feel like partly why I have to go keep on seeing my psychologist is because so I can have evidence, medical evidence to show that I have mental health issues. I mean, I, I, I find this whole process to be just like, it's just so fucked. I feel like you should just, people should just believe you because you tell them, you know, I feel like you gotta, like when you go to the, uh, I feel like you gotta like bend and beg for people to believe you and it, it's just it's like, it really sucks. <laughs> And I'm not help, helping my cause by by uh, by making videos saying I feel like a fraud or something. That's not helping me, you know, helping my case. Um, but you know, I don't want to feel like a, I don't want to hide myself. I mean, seriously. I mean, if I was like in 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 a, in a, in, in uh, Nazi Germany. Yeah, I would keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, the, the government, like this government is kind of right wing. And I feel like lately every where people are going right wing, it's like uh, so lack of compassion and, you know, treating people who are unemployed, you know, like they're just bums or uh, and uh, you know people have mental health as oh they're not they just you know just treating everyone with suspicion and I'm doing the same thing to myself look so I'm doing the thing which I uh, am imagining or experiencing the government do I'm doing it to myself I'm treating myself with suspicion and with uh, judgment and self-condemnation because I feel like this is what uh, society is doing to people like me is like oh you, you guys are just losers and, and you're not trying hard you're lazy your bums uh, you know so I so I feel like that's you know I feel like that's yeah so I, I judge myself in that way I am not a fraud. I didn't lie on any of my applications. If I say I feel like a fraud, that's the, that's a reflection of how I feel, how I'm feeling. You know, maybe I'm feeling okay right now, and if, and and you know, I don't I don't feel so depressed right now. But you know, a few days ago, I might have been very depressed. You know, you, you get mental health is fluctuating. You know. My circumstances have not changed, okay? My feelings go up and down and my... F I cannot just say, oh, because I feel okay today, that means... No. I can't, I can't make huge decisions about my life based on how I'm feeling in the given moment. When I made my application, I was in a very, very bad state. I was in a horrible state, and I, I and I've been feeling quite depressed lately. But but just like maybe like uh, ever since like a few days ago when I started when I said uh, I'm going to move out, I've suddenly started to feel good or something. I've got all this energy in me when I when I decided to move out. I feel like maybe that's like a goal or something, and and it's giving me all this energy and positivity. And, and, and as, a, as a result of all these positive feelings, I, I, I feel like I, I feel like a fraud because I don't feel as bad as I, as I was feeling a, a few weeks ago, you know, for months and months. So I feel because I feel a bit better now, I, I'm saying, oh, I'm, I, I feel like a fraud because I don't feel that bad. But then again, mental health thing, it goes up and down. It's, it's episodic. And I don't know how long this is going to last. I mean, I've had positive periods before but then they go away you know so you can't, I can't just 
say I'm going to be okay. I'm everything is good. You know, you know I'm going. I'm fine. No, 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 no. That's not how it works. Even the National Disability Insurance Agency recognizes that mental health episode. Uh, mental health is episodic. Uh, uh, mental health episodic. Why are all of these things PDF files? Mental health services for adults with complex and severe mental illness. Yeah, I've got I've got a complex because uh, you can't pin down my issues to just one thing like depression or anxiety. It's actually it's 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 hard to just use one word to describe it, you know. Okay, so here is a description of severe mental illness. I just googled this so uh, oh severe episodic mental illness it refers to individuals who have discrete episodes of illness interspersed with periods of minimal symptoms and disability or even remission discrete compared to two thirds of all adults who have a severe mental illness so uh, I was diagnosed with bipolar <laughs> well, I don't know all, all these words man I'm just gonna tell you like it's difficult to just pin down like for me anyway it's like I don't I don't think one word or one term can describe my problems So two-thirds two of all adults who have a severe mental illness uh, have a severe episodic mental illness, whereas one-third of people who have a severe mental illness have a persistent mental illness. So persistent mental illness refers to individuals with a severe mental illness where symptoms and or associated disability continue at high levels without remission over long periods, years rather than months. This group represents about one third of all adults who have a severe mental illness. So a severe mental illness is characterized by a severe level of clinical symptoms and degree of disablement to social, personal, family and occupational functioning. An estimated 3.1% of the Australian population have severe disorders equivalent to 690,000 people. About one third of the severe group have a psychotic illness, primarily schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. The largest group, um, approximately 40%, is made, up, is made of people with severely disabling forms of anxiety disorders and depression. Um... Okay, so a mental illness that is clinically diagnosed is a health problem that significantly affects how a person feels, thinks, behaves, and interacts with other people. The diagnosis of mental illness is generally made according to the classification systems of the DSM or the ICD. <coughs> The term mental disorder is also used to refer to these problems and mental illness is present when such feelings of anxiety, fear, tension or sadness become so disturbing and overwhelming that people have great difficulty coping with day-to-day -day activities such as work, enjoying leisure time and maintaining friendships. 
a mental health problem also interferes with how a person thinks, feels, and behaves, but to, but to a lesser extent than mental illness. Mental health problems are more common and include mental ill health that can be experienced temporarily as a reaction to the stresses of life. Mental health problems are less severe than mental illness, but may develop into a mental illness if they are not effectively managed. So they've identified three levels. You got mental health problem, you got mental illness, and then you got severe mental illness. So this is for uh, Tasmania, actually. Anyway, I will, uh, yeah, Primary Health Tasmania. I will link that anyway. At least that, you don't have to download that video, uh, that document. I mean, it's getting close to the time I have to leave. <laughs> And go to my doctor. Yes, so, uh, I am not a fraud. I know I made a video where I said I was, I feel like a fraud. Feeling like a fraud is different from actually committing fraud. When I did, when I submitted my application for the disability allowance, I submitted letters from my psychiatrist and psychologist which and, the, and they are real people they <laughs> they weren't forged documents they were written by my psychiatrist and psychologist um, now whether you agree with the psychiatrist or the or the diagnosis that's i don't know that's a separate thing you might not agree with the diagnosis but that is what they wrote you know um this is a, this is a <clears throat> an issue because when you're when you're um see if I go to my psychiatrist and tell them how I'm feeling and thinking they will my they will accept that you know they're not going to question myself and say well are you sure <laughs> <laughs> no, they listen to me and they accept what I say, you know. Um, so does this mean that their 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 diagnosis is uh, inaccurate just because they listen to what I'm saying? I mean, isn't that like the, the some people will uh, will uh, might not might might not believe you when you say this is how I feel, this is how I think, this is what I'm doing, I, you know? Uh, when, I base, when I say some people, I mean someone who is not trained in mental health matters might not uh, will say something like, oh, that's just, you know, uh, you're just exaggerating or something like that. So, does this mean that so what am I trying to say? My application for the disability support pension was based on letters written by my psychiatrist and psychologist, plus the interview I had, the on the teleconference I had with a psychologist who was employed, contracted by a company which was itself contracted well I don't know if the psychologist was contracted but who was contracted uh, by the government in effect to evaluate my evaluate the documents I presented and do an e interview of me so based on uh, the, her interview the interview by a psychologist signed by the government plus the documents I provided uh, from my psychiatrist and psychologist, a decision was made that I am medically, uh, no, I'm medically, uh, what is it called? The, yeah, I have, I have a medical basis 
for my uh, disability, right? Ugh. Mm. Medical evidence. Yeah, so there is a Yeah, medical evidence. So there is a medical basis to grant me disability support pension. So yes, so I did not commit fraud. I did not forge any documents. I did not forge any signatures. Uh, the documents I presented were from qualified mental health practitioners, the psychiatrists and the psychologists. Um, uh, what else? Now, you, now, whether or not you agree with their diagnosis, I guess that's why they subjected those letters to scrutiny by a psychologist hired by the government. Not only did she look at those letters, she also interviewed me. And um, I also had communications with that organization which, which did the uh, interview. And maybe they read my emails and thought, okay, this person is a little bit... <laughs> is a little bit uh, unstable. Because I was actually kind of like... At the time I was really stressed out and I was like telling them um, what did I tell them I told them like I wanted an online interview I, I, I don't want to go out come in person I have anxiety and um, I also told them I was also asking them questions like is it possible to um, like what is the because of, I said something like what, what can you sue uh, a um, if a, 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 a company contracted out by the government because um, no 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 I wasn't talking about suing no I said I, no no I was I said something like because I was because I wanted to I was making all these videos what I wanted to say, and you know, you can't, you can't defame the government. That you can't defame the government. So the, I was asking them, can you defame a company contracted out by the government to provide um, mental health services? So uh, yeah, so. Well, actually, I wrote a very extensive <laughs> email telling them, you know, how I thought that uh, I was complaining to them, or to them about the legislation. Uh, I was actually saying, um, I want people to leave me alone. Uh, I say something, I don't want to perform for the government contracted doctor. I'm going to tell them exactly what I told you here. Um, and I also said, how is someone going to evaluate me and write a report on my mental health conditions on the basis of a one hour interview? Does that make sense to you? Do you honestly think that this report written by this government contracted doctor is going to be valid? I'm not a fool and neither are you. Any person with common sense would agree with my statement. You cannot make a valid, reasonable, useful assessment of someone's mental health on the basis of a one-hour interview. It takes years sometimes to truly understand somebody. So I regard this as a farce, another obstacle set up by Centrelink to stop people from getting the disability pension. The people who write these laws don't care about people like me. They're only interested in, in winning votes, getting elected. People like me, the unemployed, the marginalized, the disenfranchised, are punching bags during election time. We are also unwitting, for the most part, participants in various <coughs> social experiments to boost the egos and careers of some academic or other who has years 
who has the ears of those in power or are in power themselves. Okay, so I was really ranting a lot to them. <laughs> I told them dear so madam I don't want to work the government is forcing me to do this disability medical assessment because they don't want to give me the disability support pension I want the government to give me money in return for nothing I don't want to earn a living I don't want to work I just wish people would leave me alone is it so hard to pay someone a measly income every fortnight in a rich country such as this I think the disability medical assessment is a farce how is a uh, yeah okay I don't want to work. I want Centrelink to pay me money so I can live my life. This is all I want. And they said, thank you for your email. Please contact us <laughs> should you have any queries. <laughs> they didn't even respond to it. Um, did I ask for a video conference? And they said again, thank you for your email. Please contact us. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to sit. And then I responded. I think they tried to call me again. <clears throat> and I said, hello there. I'm not sure why this you're sending me the same generic message. I am not interested in having um, any conversation with uh, this over the phone now. I'm not interested in suing uh the your organization the, 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 for some personal gain however i will uh, okay here's what i wrote however i will ask some questions since i'm curious and i want to know how this disability medical assessment is being administered i made several complaints to centrelink about how they have been treating me as regards my application for the disability support pension like i said i'm not in a position to call uh, right now the these past few days have been incredibly stressful for me i know how i know people in general don't want anything put down in writing for fear of being held to account either legally or through some other means i'm not trying to threaten uh, with the legal action i'm simply trying to defend myself i don't want to be pushed around by centrelink and contractors who hack who act on its behalf If Centlink thinks I do not qualify for the disability support pension, they should make that decision immediately and tell me. Instead, they choose to submit me to these various assessments. I had a job capacity assessment on... Oh, yes, right. I also had a, uh, another one with a job capacity assessment. I had a job capacity assessment on Thursday, uh, 30th January, and I get a call from... Oh yeah, that's right. So I, the last part of my application, I did get a, a job capacity assessment from Centrelink as well. I, I forgot about that. And I get a call from this company the very next day. This is quite troubling. Was the report by the job capacity assessor already written and sent to Centrelink within a day? I have requested Centrelink provide me with reasons for making the referral for the disability medical assessment. I have requested that if the settling officer who was handling my case and who made the deci decision to refer me to this company for a disability medical assessment is not willing to provide me reasons for that decision, Centrelink should transfer my application to another officer who is willing to provide reasons for the decision and is trained in mental health matters. This email is very troubling to me. I don't know why I am being sent the same generic email. I do not like to interact in this manner. Open, transparent communication is what I want. I do not want any more generic emails <laughs> like the police call us from this. Uh, if Dash company wants to send me further emails, they have to be more specific and address the concerns I have expressed thus far. If I chose to do so, oh, oh I should write choose. I may call them sometime next week to discuss the disability medical assessment appointment i do not consent to this company calling me over the phone i do not consent to <laughs> the company calling me on my mobile number at this going forward if, if the company i would just use the company instead of actually their name wants to communicate with me the company has to use this email address as means of correspondence i give my email address I will protect my rights and stand up for myself. I will not be pushed around by 
said company, simply and the Commonwealth Government of Australia. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. All right, so they made the assessment. All right, so they set up the... Uh, tele tele appointment. Anyway, I gave them a list of the appointments I had with my psychiatrist, uh, with my uh, psychologist and psychiatrist. So, as you can tell, you know all the concerns. I'm in. look. I did not commit fraud. I had lots of things on my. Uh, yeah. I, I, a report from my uh, letters from my psychiatrist, psychologist, plus a job capacity assessment conducted by Centrelink, and I spoke to a psychologist who works for Centrelink, and a uh, uh, another um, disability medical. So there was a job capacity ass assessment, and after that there was a disability medical assessment uh, conducted by a psychologist. Who to who uh, reviewed my uh, letters? I think and also whatever information they had. So you know how I was saying how can uh, how can someone how can this psychologist like review me on on one interview? But when I actually did the interview, well, she told me that I'm I'm all I'm going. I'm just, she told me that she was only going to go off the information she had, like my letters and whatnot, and, and I guess they wanted to speak to me in person or through the video to, what, I don't know what they, why they wanted to even speak to me, were they trying to figure out if I was being genuine or something, or, or, or was that another obstacle? Maybe, maybe, maybe um, I guess they just, I guess they just try, trying to make it as hard as po uh, possible for you to get the pension. So you, they're trying to make you jog, jump to all these hoops. You know, I guess they figured that if they put enough barriers, some people will give up or something. I don't know. So you see, I did not commit fraud. I, I, I went through all the steps. I didn't forge signatures. I didn't forge documents. The documents were written by qualified medical professionals. I had a uh, few interviews done by, you know, job capacity assessment, disability, medical assessment. Now, if you disagree with the letters written by my psychologist, or, well, I, my psychologist, I, her letter was really, really good because she, I've, I've, she was the one I've seen the most and she knows a lot about my uh, condition whereas my psychiatrist I haven't really seen her that much but you know she goes off um, what my psychologist says uh, you know my psychiatrist prescribed medication and she makes diagnosis and um, I mean, she has to go off what I'm saying, you know, if I say I've got mood issues and if I say, you know, I, I, I've got, I, I can recognize the borderline symptoms and I, I, I remember doing some kind of a, she, she sent me, uh, I remember in one of our sessions, she, she did like a questionnaire or something and I think that's for borderline. <sighs> anyway, I, so, yes. There is no fraud, okay? You. How can I explain this? Where is the fraud? There was no forging of documents, signatures. They were all from qualified mental health professionals. Um, the only thing I can I can say is that someone may disagree with the diagnosis. Uh, but what are you gonna do? I mean, I guess you can get another opinion. Um, I guess maybe uh, having a job capacity assessment and this disability medical assessment is another opinion. Maybe that's what they mean by another opinion. Um, I guess maybe that's maybe that's how they verify it. Um, you know. That's not fraud. If people have different opinions, it's, you know, that's just their professional opinion. Uh, so I had 
an opinion by my psychiatrist, uh, which is supported by my psychologist, and um, the government uh, subjected me to two separate assessments, and they wrote their own reports. Yeah, I don't know if I actually got the job capacity assessment report myself. Um, in fact, I don't even I'm not, I didn't even get a uh, I don't even know what the disability medical assessment report looked like. I don't think so. They didn't give it to me. So you got two reports from the government, two from me. Where is the fraud? feeling like a fraud because I don't feel good enough or uh, I'm questioning whether or not I deserve to be supported. That's a personal subjective experience. It's a feeling uh, and that may be, that's, there might be several reasons for why I might feel that way. One of the reasons may be because I'm feeling a bit better now. But again, we should know that mental illness is episodic in nature and, you know, I was not feeling good for a while and it's only recently when I decided to move out that I've gotten all this energy. So you can't just say I don't, I'm don't. i okay just because I, I started to feel a bit better because I decided to make this decision to uh, move out. I feel like there's some optimism there. Um, so uh, yeah, the, 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 uh, it's, like I said, how I feel right now <laughs> may change. So, now if I, let's say like in a week from now, I feel really, really depressed again. And does that mean at that particular moment, I'm more genuinely mentally ill? <laughs> and does anyone understand what I'm saying? Feeling changes, but the objective condition of having a mental illness does not. What does that mean? It means that you can have a mental illness, you can be mentally ill, and you can go through these fluctuations over time. The feelings, I feel like a fraud. I feel fake because I'm not. I don't feel at that moment that I'm really anxious or depressed or paranoid or whatever. In a feeling okay, and and feeling like, oh, I don't. I'm not that ill. May change over time, you know. So, objectively mentally ill, but subjectively my experiences can change over time. So yes, I'm not a fraud. I haven't lied to anyone. I was subjected to a lot of scrutiny in my application. I had to prove myself. I had to jump through all these hoops. It was a very stressful experience. And frankly, it's an achievement that I am quite proud of. I'm quite proud of the fact that I fought for my rights, that I uh, that I went through that process, and I eventually uh, obtained what I was looking for. I'm, I'm I'm proud of the fact that I achieved that goal of getting this allowance because getting the allowance certainly helps me a lot because I don't have to subject myself to having to go to the agencies who don't really help me and I find really stressful to deal with and I don't have to do these mutual obligations it's very stressful so having this financial security is an incredibly helpful thing to me right it's an incredibly helpful thing to me not in the future if I um, you know if, if if you know I get to a point where I can work and I'm, I'm, I'm um, you know, then, you know, I will, I will let Centlink know, you know, if I can, if I can, if I get to a point where I can manage my life and I can be more financially independent and, and have a good social support system and I feel like I can do that, then 
I mean, Centrelink will know. I will notify them of changes in circumstances like that. If I get a job, I will let them know. Uh, but I haven't gotten a job. I don't feel like I can get a job right now. Um, I'm not sure when something like that can happen. Uh, but if and when I get a job or um, and that's probably the most important thing. Uh, if and when I get a job or uh, whatever, um, I will let them know. I mean, if I move addresses, yeah, I will let them. I have to let them know, know then. Um, but yeah, I'm not a fraud. <laughs> okay.